Hi guys, welcome to Lane Electronics Repair. So here we have another BN Sports receiver, satellite receiver, as used by many bars around here to show the live sport. And this one is saying that there's no card inserted, even when it is inserted, and that's the correct way round. So let's try it, let's see if we can just confirm that is the problem with it. Then let's talk about how the smart card works. This might not be relevant to fixing it, but I think you might find it interesting. And then let's see if we can get this one to work. So the first thing I'll do is just connect it up to the dish and let's see what it's doing. Okay, so the box is booting up. They always say software update, but if they do a software update, they then tell you so. So it's not actually doing the software update at the moment, it's just looking to see if there's a later version of firmware to download from the satellite. When this was at the bar, I actually tried it and it did do a full software update, so it should have the latest version on already. Okay, now we will probably just check the time. In fact, it's restarted, okay? So we'll let it do its own thing. And it's doing the software update. Okay, let's leave it. As you can see, five minutes have passed by. It still has packet zero of 74 received data. This is quite normal with these. So it seems that the firmware update is kind of on a loop on the satellite being broadcast over and over and over again. So depending on when you switch the box on, you may have to wait for quite a while before the sequence gets back to the beginning to start updating your box. I also think it has to download certain packets first and then once it's downloaded those ones, the other ones it can download in any order and kind of like build it together because it seems that the packets don't always come in order. But right now we've just got to wait for it to start. So you can see 12 minutes in and it's definitely downloading data now. So once you get started, it does the job. Okay, so the box is completed its update. It's restarted. It's doing the same thing, software update. But I say they do this every time you switch them on anyway. But I'm expecting this time now it will just load, unless it wants to do like another software update. Let's see. Well, be in. And we're back again. So, so far, this does seem to be stuck in a download loop. Well, maybe it's kind of like downloaded one version or another. I'd have to refer back to this bit of video to have a look, actually. Well, no, it seems to be doing the same one again. I actually wasn't looking all the way through the download, so did it fail at some point? I have seen that where they just eventually pack up during the download and um, start again, maybe some corrupted data. So we'll just have to wait until this actually is happy that it has the latest firmware and boots up. And once again, it started the download. So let's leave it running this time so we can see what happens and let's see if it completes. Okay, well, it looks like we might be there now. Yeah, received all the data. Let's see what happens. Well, pre-processing data sounds promising. Now what? Well, we're processing this, having already pre-processed it. Okay, gathering speed. Okay. So it's now going to restart. Is this going to fix the problem with it not seeing the smart card? That's the question. Knowing my luck, it will, and then this won't be much of a video, will it? But I can't imagine on the previous one I was going to do it, so <laughs> that's how it goes, yeah. If it works anyway, I'll still tell you how the smart card works. That's uh, that's quite interesting. 
As I said, they always do this. They always look for software updates every time they boot. Oh, system time. That's good. So it's happy with the software version now. Right. We have a good signal. And he said he was just getting a black screen and nothing. And that seems to be what we have. Okay. So if the card is expired it normally comes up with like a screen we're giving you a list of uh, countries in the middle east and africa and numbers to call and this is doing nothing which is what he said okay let's have a look so we go into settings it's remote working not very well let's have another go okay Maybe the batteries are not good in this. He did say it was doing this, that it was taking a long time. Yeah, when you press the button, they have to wait. He said it was doing this, which is not right. It's like the processor in here is tied up doing something. Okay. I think someone here, yeah, we have uh, signal detect system information. Conditional access, I think that takes you to the smart card information. So let's have a look. Erdetto software update, this is the card or the revision of the software. Talking to the card, the fact it's greyed out usually means that's up to date. Uh, smart card status, okay. Let's have a look. And it's saying please insert the card, so we'll take the card out. And we'll search it again. Just gives a bit of a waggle. Yeah, it doesn't seem to want to read that card. Okay. I might have a, another card which doesn't belong to this box, so if we insert that card, it should try and read it and just say it's the wrong card. Let's have a go. Yeah, here we go. This one with the broken bit at the back, but that won't affect it. Let's see what it does with this one. Well, it doesn't see that one either. So I think the problem is with the box, not with the card, okay? Right. How does a smart card work and what can stop it seeing the card? I'll tell you. So the first misconception is that the smart card, this thing, decrypts the video. And the fact is, it doesn't decrypt the video. The processor in here is far too low powered to be able to actually decrypt the video, okay? The video is decrypted by the box. So back in the day, the video was decrypted by something called the conditional access module which was basically a module that plugged into your satellite receiver and depending on the type of scrambling system used you would have different modules for things like Konax, Erdetto, Seca and so on yeah via access and there were a few others so that's what actually decodes the video and the card fitted into the cam these days it's all done by the processor inside the satellite box so the cam is built into that but we still have the card okay so to understand this we need to understand how dvbs digital video broadcast from satellite works so basically in our receiver, we have the CAM conditional access module, whether it's a plug-in module or these days built in, okay? And in the CAM is the card, yeah? So the receiver receives from the satellite, the audio, the video, 
and some other things like the electronic program guide and other packets of data. Okay, and these are scrambled and coded. And for you to watch the channel, the cam needs to be able to decode or unscramble these things. Okay, and then once he's done that, coming out of it to your TV, and we'll draw a nice picture of a TV set, yeah, an old fashioned one like that. Okay, coming out of this to your TV is the unscrambled or decoded video, audio, etc. Okay. And you can now watch. So the CAM conditional access module is what descrambles the video, okay, or decodes it. Now, to do that, it needs a key or a password, if you like. And the key comes from where? It comes from the satellite, okay. And it comes from the satellite in a packet of data called an ECM, okay, and the ECM stands for an Entitlement Control Message, okay. So the ECM contains a few things, it contains a number which tells it which scrambling system this ECM is for, one which tells it which broadcaster it belongs to, There'll be a date to timestamp in there, and there'll be the thing that we're interested in there, which is called a control word. So the control word is the key that the cam needs to decode the video. But of course, they send the control word scrambled. Yeah, it, that's also encrypted. So we have an encrypted control word coming in, okay? Encrypted control word, ECW. Now, we need to decode that control word and give the decrypted control word, DCW, to the card. And this is what the card does. Card. So the card actually descrambles the control words, okay? And the way it does it is by using another key, okay? And this is called a operational key, op key. So inside the card is an op key and it uses that op key to descramble the control words. Okay. Encrypted control words come in and decrypted control words go out. Now the card has to talk to the cam. Okay. They have to talk to each other. It has to send the decrypted control words to the cam. So you could log the data that's going backwards and forwards here and you could read that decrypted control word and say oh i've got the control word now i can descramble the video and if you use that control word and some other equipment yeah all the official equipment you can watch the video so to stop you doing that they send control words quite often different ones okay now the control word is the same control word for every viewer, every receiver has the same control word because it's the same video stream. There's only one scrambled video stream, therefore there's only one control word, okay? So what they do is they send in this ECM about once every 20 seconds, they send another control word encrypted, okay? And we actually have on this system, we have control word zero and we have control word one. So the way the system works is this. Embedded in the video and audio is this ECM. The ECM has an encrypted control word zero. That goes to your card, your card decrypts it, sends the decrypted one back to the cam and you can now watch the video. And we're using control word zero. And the ECM will actually tell the cam which control word we are using okay while that's happening the broadcaster then sends a control word one encrypted so the card decrypts control word one so now you've got both control word one and control word zero but you're using zero 
The broadcaster has to wait until every card has decrypted control word one before they can use it. Now, some people may change channel in the meantime, or they may have just switch the box on in the meantime. So this is why we have this 20 seconds, yeah. So after about 20 seconds, the card itself only takes maybe 0.5 seconds to actually decode the thing, but it's just waiting until everybody, their box has had the time to do it, okay? So now, the next DCM tells it to use control word one, so we're now using this one. And then they send a new control word zero, so 20 seconds later again, they switch to that. So they switch backwards and forwards between the two control words. They know everybody's card has decoded it by now, so we keep watching. But because these are changing so often, it doesn't matter if you log the thing, because by the time you've logged it before, you can do anything with it, really. It's, it's gone. Yeah. So that's how it worked. Interesting is this op key. So everybody needs the same op key to decrypt the control word. And again, we have op key zero and we have op key one. Okay. Now, if somebody hacks the card and gets the operational key, now we can decrypt all the control words. So the system is broken, it's hacked, yeah. And because every card has to have the same op key, then the only thing the broadcaster can do now is change all the cards. So this is how it was on early scrambling systems. So the next thing they brought out was the enhancement of this. And this uses another message, and this is clever. So we also have a message called an EMM, okay? Entitlement Management. message okay and the entitlement management message can either be sent what they call emmu which is a unique to one card yeah we have uh, emmg which is global and we also have emm which can be sent to groups of cards as well so the emm can be meant for just one card it can be meant for all cards okay and this is how they send new op keys to the cards. So if the system becomes compromised, or maybe just every so often anyway, they will send a new op key. So everybody's using op key zero to decrypt the control words, okay? And in the meantime, they send op key one. But this is a clever bit. They're encrypted as well. So your card also needs a master key. And the master key belongs to the card so what they do is every card has its own master key okay the emm that contains the new op key although it's the same op key for every card it's encrypted using the master key that belongs only to one card or a small group of cards so over a period of time days hours usually days sometimes weeks months they will send out the master keys individually to every single card or a small group of cards. And this takes time, so they can't do it very often, yeah? But you can send out new op keys to the cards each time encrypted just for that one card. The idea of this is if somebody gets the master key out of a card by hacking the card and puts that on the internet, the broadcaster knows which card that is that's being hacked. So A, they can switch it off, B, they can go and see where they live. Yeah, it's that sort of thing. And then they can just send out new EMMs to all the other cards, but not that one, and change the op keys and all the other cards are still working and they're still secure. So that's how the system actually works. Out of interest, because I know you guys are interested, these cards did get hacked and they got hacked in various ways. Lots of ways, but one of the ways was basically to measure the time it took for the card to process an ECM, and there were some clever tricks around. 
So you can set it where like you use an op key with so many correct bits and incorrect bits. It'll take a certain time and then you change one of the bits and see if it takes longer or less. And if it takes longer or less, you can say, right, that bit is either a one or a zero. Now you know what that is and you change another bit and so on. A bit like a dial on the combination lock where it goes click at a certain point, you can work out what the numbers are. So that's one way they got hacked. Another way they got hacked was to measure the current signature basically you put a small resistor in series and measure the currents and again you could figure out what was happening due to the current being drawn at certain times uh, another way was effectively to depackage the chip from the card and with the electron microscope you could actually read the bits in the ROM and actually read out the data that way visibly and there was lots of clever ways the other one was glitching the card so at a certain point in the execution on the power sequence, you can drop the power for the length of one operation code and make the card do something else and effectively take it over, hijack it, yeah. And that's how things got hacked. Obviously, over the years, these cards became more and more secure. They were doing clever things like putting variable frequency clock oscillators in them so that the time it took to process an ECM was never the same. Yeah, it was all over the place to stop you doing that. There was all sorts of things that went on, really. Same with the, the uh, power signatures and such like. This will all become relevant, by the way, shortly, but we'll carry on a bit. So basically, there was kind of like a cat and a mouse game between the companies that were making these smart cards and the hackers who were hacking them. And really, it got to the point where your bedroom hacker couldn't no longer really hack these cards because they were so secure, there were really no back doors left or ways in, or they were few and far between. So then, around about a bit over 20 years ago, somebody really smart realised that it doesn't matter how secure this card is or how secure they become, because this whole system as an Achilles heel. Yeah. And basically, by realising that, they broke the whole system because every pay TV service in the world basically used this system and they were all broken. So, this clearly was like one of these 4am moments, yeah? And uh, what they figured out was so obvious that everybody should have seen it, but nobody did until that point. And the Achilles heel is basically tied around three things. One, that these control words have to be loaded into the cam before they use them. Okay. Secondly, that they only change it about once every 20 seconds. And thirdly, that they only take about half a second for the card to decode. And then they sort of sit there until everybody has the control word and the broadcaster then switches the video to encrypt with that control word and tells the card or the cam via the ECM, use this control word now, okay? And the way to break this was quite simple. So take the card out of the receiver, okay, and connect the card to a computer, PC, running Windows or Linux, whatever you want to write your software for, okay? Instead of having the card and the receiver, we'll put the box. We insert a logger. This is like a PCB with some contacts on that connects where the card would connect, okay? And the logger has a serial port on, USB and connects to a PC. Okay. And when this PC sees an ECM, it sends the ECM across the internet to a server. That's this PC. Internet. Now, because the control word is sent in the ECM about 20 seconds before it's used, there's lots of time to send that ECM. And the ECM is maybe 100 to 200 bytes. So the bandwidth 
on this channel is very, very low. Yeah, low enough to even use on dial. But just over 20 years ago, broadband was becoming, it certainly was ADSL was becoming common at the time. So a lot of people now had always on internet and you know what, half a megabyte or one megabit per second, that sort of thing, yeah. Half a megabit, I should say. So that's how the system got broke. And then the PC sends the ECM, or rather, shall we say, sends the encrypted control word to the card. And the card replies back with the decrypted control word. Okay. The PC can send it then back to this PC, and that sends it to the box. And well before the video switches to using that key, you've already got it. Okay, and then the same happens with control word zero and so on. But the Achilles heel had a bigger hole in it than that. Mostly this card isn't doing anything. Only for about half a second or one second out of every 20 seconds is it decrypting the control word and the rest of it's idle. So you can have lots more PCs, clients. Okay connecting to the server. Now, when the first client sends the request for a decrypted control word for a given channel, the card is asked to decode it. And when the answer comes back in this PC is a buffer. Uh, so this not only sends the decrypted control word back, shall we say to this one, client number one. So this goes ECW and this says DCW. It's now in the buffer. So any other clients who are now watching that channel or switch that channel, the card doesn't need to decrypt it again, that control when it's already done it. So all these other ones just take a shortcut, yeah? Those two say. So these are all watching the same channel. Now, if this one here is watching a different channel, while the card is decoding the control word, the first one, the PC holds the second one. As soon as this finishes, it gives it the other one to decode. Huh? So it can now decode another one. And again, that's held in the buffer in case there's more clients who want to watch this channel. So two things happen here. One, you can have an unlimited practically number of clients watching the channels using one card. Huh? And two, one card can decrypt as many channels as it can handle between them sending the next control word. So if they do it every 20 seconds and they'll have a bit of time, this can probably decode 10 channels. And after it's decoded 10 channels, the first one sends the next control word. So this one card can now open maybe 10 channels for as many people as you like. And this PC, because the ECM tells it which channel this is for effectively. This PC could have like some more cards. Uh, some more cards for the same or different TV broadcasters. And it can filter them. So we can say, okay, this card can only handle 10 channels. We'll give it a bit of leeway, call it nine. So after there's nine requests in the queue, we'll send the other one to that card. Or we can say that this card only gets requests for these nine or 10 channels, that one for these nine or 10 channels and so on, whichever way, yeah. So either by effectively just balancing up the queues, so neither of them gets overloaded. So basically now with maybe five cards, you're decrypting 50 channels for everybody on the planet. That's why there was a big Achilles heel in the system. And this is why this must have been a 4 a.m. thing, yeah. This then basically shook up the whole thing and for quite a few years, everybody could watch everything because they had to figure a way to stop it. Yeah? And the way eventually that this was not exactly stopped, it still goes on to some extent, but very much reduced, was by interfering with this. So, after a while, we found that the encrypted control word went to the card, okay? 
The card decrypts you the control words. Remember that the same control word opens that channel. There's only one for that channel in use at a time. But the card re-encrypted the control word using what's called a box key. So the cam has a box key, the card has a box key, and although the control word is the same control word, every card and every box has its own box key, so it's re-encrypted, so it's different for every receiver. And now this system doesn't work anymore, unless you happen to know what the box key is. Yeah, well, you can hack the box key. So that's how we turned it up, and that is why, and this is, I told you it would become relevant, why the card on these boxes is married to the box. Okay, that's why. Not only to stop the card sharing, but also to stop you or try to stop you using that card in an unofficial box. So the card is still in the box. And the reason for that is because, as you'll see, or rather you have seen if you watch the video, they put these like little encrypted numbers on the screen so people can wander around bars and places, and, or people can watch IPTV services and say, oh, that's the card they're using to scramble this channel and feed into the IPTV, yeah? If the card would work in an unofficial box, the unofficial box can't put that number on the screen. That's something built into the firmware of the official box. So that's the other reason why they use the box key to match the cards with the boxes. Okay, there you go. So that was yeah, lesson 101 and how the smart card work and a bit of a history of uh, smart card and pay TV hacking. Hope you enjoyed it. Now let's see if we can fix ours. So why isn't the receiver reading the card? Well, either it's not getting the ECM sent to the card, so it's not doing anything. The card's faulty, so it's not sending anything back. We put another card in, it didn't seem to make any difference. Don't think it's the card. The receiver sending no power to the card. I think these are five volts, maybe 3.3 volts. I'm not sure on these more modern ones. So maybe the card's got no power in the card reader. Maybe there is a bad contact in the card reader. And maybe, in fact, I'm sure there will be, there is a switch when you plug this in and the switch is not triggering. So it thinks there's no card in there. Okay, so now we've had lots of fun with the theory. Let's do some stuff in practice. Okay, so here's our receiver. This is the card reader. It's a very simple thing, yeah. And that's the switch that detects whether there's a card in. So you can see the switch is moving here. Yeah? I think that goes down to these two connections here. Let's have a look. So without the card inserted, that's open. Uh huh. Have we got connection noise? Now it reads closed. Now it reads open. I think I just had a bad connection on there. So it definitely reads. That the card is inserted, okay. You don't suppose that's fixed it, do you? Let's have a quick look. Let's just check some voltages on these. We know what we should have. Okay. So. 12. Uh, just 3.3, this one, yeah, 3.3. This is a 5, I think, and then we had 1.05 or thereabouts. Yeah, 1.03, and then 1.5, which is the RAM. Okay, so all the voltages are there, okay. Let's put the capture card back on. Let's see what it does. Well, smart card is not available. At least we've got a message now. This is going to work. We often see that and then you come on. Let's have a look. No. 
but it's doing something different. Let's take it out. Please insert smart card. No. Could be that it's just not making a good contact in the video. That's another thing. But we have a different message. So let's push down on here. Push the card in. See what that does. No, it's asking for the smart card. Put the other one in. Okay. No. There are eight uh, connections on these smart cards. By the way, that one looks particularly dirty. I'll clean them with a bit of ice and see if that helps. Okay, so this is the one that's the broken one. Not reading it. Let's just check the voltage between the two pins on the reader. I want to see how, how they change when it's inserted. So that reads 3.2. That reads 0. That reads 3.2. So it's definitely switching the switch. Okay. I'm not seeing the card. Let's go with the other one. This is the correct one for the box. Well, if it was the incorrect card, it reads it or tell you it's the incorrect card. 3.2. No. No, nothing. So we're going to have to have a look to see if we can test if there's any communication going on between the smart card and the processor. Probably this is something we can't fix. Could be dirty contacts inside this card reader. We can have a quick look at that. Okay, I've put the bad card in. It's no good anyway, so let's see if we can actually tell whether or not we have a contact. The problem being, of course, that by effectively pushing down or, or even just touching the little terminal, I might make a contact anyway. Try to touch it very gently. And then touch the card. Yeah. That's this area, that's the ground. This one. Yeah, these all seem to be good. I don't think we have a dodgy card reader. I mean, we can always kind of like flex them a little bit. Okay. I think we'll probably see as we insert the card that they spring up a little bit, which is what you expect them to do. Can we see that? Yeah, I think we can see that. There, yeah. And they're all lifting. And the same with that side, yeah, they're all lifting. So they should make a good contact in there, okay? Let's just try again with the good one with the circuit board out of the unit. Okay, and let's see if it works now. Smart card not available, but I sometimes see that and then it effectively starts to work. Okay, it's not going to do, take it out. 
Please insert smart card. So it is reading the card. It knows it's there. But then it doesn't see it. Uh, I have a few more scrap ones. So I'm going to find one that actually does see the card, even though it's is not subscribed. And then see if this machine will see that card. I mean, it's possible I have more than one faulty card, but it seems a little bit strange for that to be the problem. Okay. Uh, 